Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Carmine Sabia for Explain America, and we now have some information on Kamala Harris's vice presidential choice. Before we get started, please make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Those little things really help us out, and they help our channel continue to grow. And if you're not watching us on YouTube, guys, it helps us so much to spread our Christian conservative message. If you follow that link in the lower right-hand corner, youtube.com forward slash at explain America. Hit the subscribe button for free, and it really helps us to keep bringing news to the people that affects their everyday lives. Guys, there's to me one choice that's the correct choice for Kamala Harris for vice president. It's the one choice I don't want her to pick because he terrifies me in terms of what he can bring to the table. I believe that he's very popular and could be very dangerous to the electoral map for Republicans. That man's name is Josh Shapiro, and he's the governor of the great state of Pennsylvania. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I should say. He's a very smart guy. He speaks to that area of the country very well. And even CNN is saying he's clearly the best choice. Now, we have new news about Harris's pick, and I'm going to get to that in just a second. But there is a reason, a horrible reason, for Harris not to pick him. And that's because Harris has to appeal to the anti-Semites in her party. And the anti-Semites in her party would not be very happy with her picking a Jewish vice president. That's why a lot of people believe she won't pick Shapiro. Me? I don't know who she's going to pick. But she said at the beginning of next week she will announce that pick. And they will start going on a tour of the swing states. I want you to watch this video and let me know what you think in the comments. I suggest that whoever she picks up as her running mate could help give her the edge. The pool of VP candidates is starting to thin out now as of this morning, and I guess it should because they're kind of out of time. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer saying she's not part of the vetting process. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper withdrawing himself from the candidate pool just last night. That is where CNN's Harry Anton comes in. Talk to me about these VP candidates and some of the top candidates, if you will, how they do electorally in their states. Yeah, so, you know, nationally, a lot of these guys aren't particularly well known. So I think it's important to look at their home states, the people who know them best, to get an understanding, right. okay, right. of how popular these guys can potentially be. So this is how much they outperformed Biden's 2020 margin in their last election. All these guys ran in 2022. And the one name that just stands out on this list is Josh Shapiro from Pennsylvania. Look at this. He outperformed Biden by 14 points. My goodness gracious, look how large that is. Sometimes I think an answer is just staring you straight in the face. And in this particular case, Josh Shapiro is looking at you right in the face. Look, Mark Kelly's not too bad either, right? He outperformed Biden by five points. And keep in mind, he was running in a federal race, which isn't quite apples and apples, right, with a gubernatorial statewide race. But still, five points, not bad, outran all the other Democrats in Arizona. Tim Walsh, who seems to have been picking up some sort of momentum on social media. But look at this. He only outperformed Biden by 0.6 points, very much on a different planet than, let's say, a Josh Shapiro, who's the clear runaway winner on this particular metric. Is there proof that a VP candidate can help him carry a state? Right. So we look at all of this, right? We go, okay, what does this exactly mean? There is one proven effect for a VP, right? And it is, in fact, this home state effect. Look, it's not necessarily particularly large. It's 0.5 to 2 points on average added to their running mate's margin compared to the baseline. But you know how close elections. I was going to say, that's how much they're going to win. This, 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 yeah. this is the whole, whole ball game. I mean, Pennsylvania last time was decided by 1.2 points. You look at Arizona, it was decided by 0. 0.3 points. If you're able to add 0. 0.5 to 2 points, that could all of a sudden help you capture a state like Arizona or Pennsylvania, especially when you got guys like Shapiro who outran Biden by 14 points or Mark Kelly who outran Biden by 5 points. They could definitely be the types of candidates who could help put one of those two states over the top. Which of the top candidates' home states is most likely, maybe most important for Harris or Trump to win? Yeah, there you go. So if you, let's say you're choosing between a Mark Kelly and you're choosing between him and a Josh Shapiro, which of these two states is the one that you actually want to provide that boost to? So this will give you an idea, all right? The chance that this state puts either Harris or Trump over the top in the Electoral College. 
Once again, look at Pennsylvania as the clear run, runaway winner here. A 30% chance, a 30% chance that that is the state that puts you over the top in the Electoral College. Mm -hmm. Arizona, it's just a 4%. Minnesota's less than a 3%. Why is Pennsylvania so important? Well, it has so many electoral votes. It has 19 electoral votes, right? So if you're able to put that in your back pocket, all of a sudden your electoral map for Kamala Harris becomes that much easier, and it makes Donald Trump's map a lot more harder. Or not, a lot harder, I should say. Not a lot more harder is also a way oh, to say. Well. Not leading us to any conclusion, though, of where she'll end up, but no. interesting nonetheless. It, interesting nonetheless. I don't know which way she'll go, but the <laughs> math points in a very clear direction in my mind. It's good to see you. Nice to see you. John.